It's all about the habits. habits. You don't wanna be dependent. Hey, I don't wanna be average. Hey, I just wanna persevere. I just wanna go and do it, man. I gotta make it happen. Hey. My name is Mari Spokan with Donway Realty. I'm a realtor here in the Sarasota, Florida area. And today on this episode of Discover SRQ, I have with me Josh Huffman with Tropical Sunshine Home Inspection. He's the owner, operator of his amazing company. And today we're gonna do a whole home inspection. Um, he's already been here for quite a while and did the preliminary sort of things, but he's gonna point out some of the bigger issues that we've seen with the house. So, Josh, please tell us a little bit about yourself and your company. Okay, uh, yeah, like you said, Mario said, I'm Joshua Huffman. Uh, I lived here about three years doing home inspections. And um, today what we're looking at is an interesting situation. It's a new construction. Um, it's uh, zoned as a condo so they can get by with the, the easements and how close together these units are. But it's actually a single family home standalone it's not connected on uh, any side never uh, seen anything like it <laughs> no and it's uh you know it's uh, very unusual that it's been raised uh, it's stick built so um it's not slab on grade like 99 percent of all the homes that we see being right. built here um, exactly. it's, it's raised about four foot off the graded area it makes it a little bit different so i haven't crawled under a house in a little bit so we're happy to uh, you know show you around this house absolutely and like josh said this is a very unique situation i mean if you're going to be spending uh, I believe they're asking $415,000 for this unit here. You definitely need to get inspected, especially in Florida where you have um, the storms and termites and everything else that are pretty much an ongoing thing in Florida. And we're building a lot of homes very quickly. We're building a lot of homes very quickly. A lot of houses. So basically my main question I get from my new construction buyers is should I get my brand new construction home built? It's brand new, it's got a builder warranty on it, and every single time I say absolutely, um, all sorts of things hiding behind those walls. And actually we ask for two home inspections, right? Correct, the pre-drywall. So pre-drywall. To me that's one of the most important because we don't be able to see the the structural walls. We want to see, you know, how those trusses or, you know, how the uh, framing, plumbing, electric, um, before we uh, hide all those by putting them inside walls or under insulation. Uh, it's really great to get a professional eye to look and make sure that everything is uh, above reproach and yeah, you know, ready for a home to last 100 years. So stay tuned. We're going and we're going to take a look outside, then we'll head inside. Let's go. All right. It's new construction and um, one of the biggest issues I have with this house um, is that International Building Code calls for a six inch drop within the first 10 foot around all new construction. And as you can see, um, the slope is coming out towards the road, water runoff, but um, we don't have that slope to code. So the water is gonna run along the side of the house. It's probably gonna cut through the flower bed, as you can see. And then it's gonna start to flow this way and. Uh, you know, we just don't want water near our foundational walls because this wall is holding a lot of weight and these walls are holding up the weight of the whole house. Our trusses are running this way. So these are our low, main low bearing walls. And um, we just don't want water anywhere near this foundation. You can see that the, the slope is very minimal. Um, it is got, it does have pavers. So, I mean, it is gonna start to bounce a lot of the water off, but we also have another big problem, which, I mean, I just don't know why it's not proper code in Florida that we have gutters on new construction. You see that we've already lost almost all our uh, our mulch. It's already washed out from yesterday to the day before it's rain. And we've got a lot of this splatter. It's trenching out the side of the- Correct. And then it's, it's bouncing and it's getting all this, look at this dirt all over our brand new house. Because water's falling two and a half stories right and it's just splattering back on our house so gutters would prevent a lot of that and gutters can get our water farther away from our house so that it's not getting near our foundational walls and look out back here it's almost perfectly flat so we should have a six inch drop the first 10 foot so as you can see that that this is level or it has negative slopage so any rainwater or storms that hit this water is going to flow it's gonna pile up around our, uh, our uh, porch area here. 
and it just really doesn't have anywhere to go. So it's going to meander near our foundational wall. And, you know, that's what causes uh, stress and cracks and movement of our foundation. And where multi stories, a little bit of movement down here exasperates as it gets higher up. So really, I mean, I just I don't love um, that we don't have a really good solid plan for where is the moisture going to go. It rains every day. It's going to rain in a few hours and uh, that moisture is going to be uh, near our foundation. We got a lot of standing water up front where, where the, I said we had all that backsplash. We didn't have any um, gutters and so it's just uh, that whole front is just full of water. Which really? is going to be a great place for insects and uh, going to start to move that, that concrete wall because that water got in somewhere, it's going to get out somewhere. So that's a big uh, design issue that we'll have to overcome and let our buyers know. So definitely my biggest issue with this house is our, is our drainage. We don't have gutters. We don't have good slope. We don't have anywhere for the water to go. And so uh, as predicted, there's water underneath our crawl space, howling up by the front of the house. And so we have a uh, Got some problems, and this is what's wrong with appraiser. This guy's probably appraising the house, he doesn't even get out. That is an appraiser. <laughs> yeah, it always drive by. Alrighty, so I'm just gonna sort of follow Josh through the house and uh, take a look and see what we've got here. Well, starting off, we've got a half bath right here. Um, got a lot of blue tape kind of spread out. These are just a little minor cosmetic issues that we want the builder to address you know like some uh, mishaps on the paint some runners some tiny little you know cracks right uh, maybe something a little bit bigger here but yeah just, like you see me caulking and painting there right we want new construction to be perfect like that is the goal is perfection and so i don't feel ashamed of asking the builder to provide a home that's absolutely perfect so uh, you know that you see lots and lots of uh, tape all around um right miss it we don't have a vanity mirror right um we've got something really funky going on back here uh, i think a nail uh, on the trim has popped through right um, yeah so we could really pick this house apart because you have blue tape all over the place <laughs> <laughs> all over the place and it, this is my favorite piece of blue tape i've ever seen it's the wtf tape because what is going on with that gray uh, it looks like that they uh, <laughs> broke in the kick plate and then put just uh, a filler in and just right. kind of left it there. But right. remember that this is final walkthrough. The builder is ready to hand this over to our buyer and say, this is your home. So, so you we know, can't assume it's going to be done. Yeah, we so, have to yeah we're going to hold some feet to the fire, exactly. um, especially major issues like the backsplash. Um, this was very interesting. So I don't run across this hardly ever, but these are um, nine pound test hurricane impact glass, which means that it's, you know, in, in a lot of aspects, nearly bulletproof. Uh, and yet somehow we're broken. Right. Um, so we've got, you know, re we're going to replace this. Right. Um, right. Show me that microwave mishap, which is uh, really strange. I would have never caught this. Extremely common. Um, that the, the fan can be popped out and it either blows out the front or is supposed to go out and exhaust. This is blowing out for an exhaust that we can clearly see doesn't exist. Right. So now all that air and all that heat and all that oil and grease is being trapped under this wooden cabinet, right. causing a fire hazard down the road. Very dangerous. As it builds up grease, right. and as it builds up heat as you're cooking. Um, yeah, so this right. is um, this see, installation air on the... Yes. And anybody else could just turn that fan on and think, oh, great, it blows. It <laughs> blows, but it's, uh, it's not doing us any good, especially in Florida when you're cooking, you're putting humidity in your house. Um, right. Uh, you know, as part of the International, uh, International Association of Certified Home Builders, Home Inspectors, we, we want all these things to exhaust outside. Right. Right. We want that humidity and that grease and that oil leaving the home and not staying in our, our lovely air-conditioned house with white cabinets and white ceilings. Um, <laughs> Exactly. So that's the preferred method. So absolutely, we're so, gonna ask them to exhaust that out the side of this house. Now, I do love these windows. So these are local. They're made in Venice. They're the PGT uh, nine pound test uh, hurricane right. impact windows. They're very well insulated. Uh, you can't hear the guy out here weed eating right across the street. 
Um, so they do really good for energy efficiency and they do really good for sound. So we have a, a, a small little, um, it's, not a, it's not an electrical problem, but um, we've got some extra wires that are not connected. Um, I noticed that this ran upstairs uh, to where the hot water heater is. Um, you know, we don't like to see, uh, you know, when I open this up, I, I expect it to be, everything has a home, everything has a place, and everything's in its place. So when I see this... We don't like I'm, to see wire nuts. We don't like to see wires dangling. We yeah, want them to... We, yeah, we want it to be yeah. uh, all straight and neat and orderly and clean and ready to go. So right. I left this open for us to... And I'm uh, still trying to figure out what was uh, the intended purpose. Because um, you don't typically run extra wiring uh, on a new construction. Right. You know, we have a, a wiring diagrams and plans and we stick to it. Absolutely. So the main, the main switch isn't there yet, so... Yeah, the main switch is outside uh, by the meter. That's right. That's the new code. Yes. Yep. So we can uh, mosey upstairs. I'm not finished our inspection yet. Um, so we've been in the attic and we've done the exterior of the house and then we've done the, the first floor. So we're missing all the blue tape up here yet to find all the cosmetic issues. And um, here we've got uh, an electric on demand hot water heater. That's cool. Um, so we can, you know, we can set our temperature to, you know, anything within a safe realm of 120 or less. Right. And then here's our disconnects and then here's our main water shutoff. Um, this is in a tiny little utility closet here in the hallway. Right. Also, what's, what's nice about this is that you are saving a lot of space because this closet would be taken up by your conventional water heater. So that's nice that they thought about that. Here's our second utility closet. And you know what? We've got a code violation here. I've just noticed. So any dwelling, any opening that's more than 24 inches deep requires illumination according to the International Ooh, Building Code. We don't have light in here. Huh? So we're about, we're about 40 inches deep, uh, which to code requires illumination. So we are going to uh, ask the builder why that they don't like building to code and tell them that we require lighting uh, in this closet. In this right. Area. So this is a good um, for stackable. Yes. That's all you can fit in here. Correct. And then you've got your dryer vent here your high voltage there for the dryer and your hot and cold there so and if you'll notice too that we're missing our beauty ring here this uh, snaps in and has a face plate that's um sure. it comes with this assembly so i don't know where it's at um can't find it anywhere uh we well you know we're not yet inspected right. upstairs here yeah uh, right um, all right and directly above you what do you have there <laughs> uh so this is a, a passive air return vent so what's what's going on is the air is pressurized and enters into the um to this uh bedroom and then it flows back um to our main return to our air conditioner here in the hallway gotcha so right we actually have a, a fully encapsulated um attic here we have um open cell phone right and uh, so the whole house is um let's go up there and take a look the whole roof deck is insulated. Right, let's take yep. a look up there. We'll grab a couple more flashlights. So rather than doing what Josh is saying, rather than doing blow and insulation, they actually uh, spray foam up there. The entire roof deck. The entire roof deck. And uh, it allows for better, much better insulation. All right, now we're up in the attic. So here is that spray insulation that we we're talking about earlier. Um, what's nice is you don't have all that blow in, so you can see all your trusses and drywall, but yeah, right. um, so it's a fully conditioned space. So, um, basically what temperature is downstairs, it's just a little bit warmer up here. We do have quite a bit of storage space up here. Um, you know, it's a, it's a decent attic. I like it a lot. We got our collar ties on all our trusses that are helping support that roof load. Mm -hmm. We've got our air conditioner here. We've got, um, our drip pan here running and then here's our condensation discharge line you can see it's fully insulated as it runs out so it doesn't drip anywhere right um this looks really neat and clean up here um i like it a lot and uh what's nice about this it's fully encapsulated and air conditioned so you don't have to worry about mold and things like correct that. uh you know and it you know anything you store up here like your photos your albums which end up or your christmas decorations they're going to last a lot longer in an right. attic like this exactly this is the new way of doing things. Yep. Yep. But absolutely. you can see though that uh, on the wind mitigation, we need to get in here and measure right. uh, the nail spacing and the length. And then over here on the uh, outside wall where this roof connects to that outer wall, 
uh, there should be some hurricane straps. Um, but they're hidden. We can't see uh, yeah, them. Yeah, <laughs> and we would need to see uh, how many nails and if right. there's nails on both sides right. as they go over that truss. And they lock that and tie this whole house together right. to operate as a single piece. Right. Yeah, and what's nice about having the AC up here is that um, all of these ducts aren't going to get hot and... You know they're going to work it's going to work a lot your system's going to work more efficiently way more efficiently um right. so you have a smaller unit i think that's a two-ton unit i've not um pulled up the serial number on it yet but right um it's going to be able to keep up very well because you said that these ducks normally in a house are running in a very very hot attic uh, the last house we did for you it was 139 degrees yeah. in the attic and you um, had to you had to uh cool it off before you could go up there because that's yeah. lethal. Yeah, that, yeah, it's an environment not conducive for right. inspectors Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> or anyone. Exactly. We were going to call it off, but then you were able to cool it down. Yeah, we were to drop it to about 120 degrees, just enough for me to get up there with the thermal camera and the flashlight and measure right. some things and um, get the wind mitigation report done and Absolutely. check it out, make sure everything was in uh, pretty good shape for our friend John, who was yeah. buying a house uh, not too far from here. While we're here, let's talk about the accident we almost had off camera. <laughs> oh yeah. So, um, so when I went to put my body weight over here to get it out of the way, we found out that this plywood was not secure, not connected, and it dropped on me. Uh, kind of startled light. Josh a little bit. So yeah. we're missing our fasteners to kind of lock this together. Sure. Keep it from bowing in the middle. Yeah. They they secured it here. They put some screws, but. On yeah. that side, they didn't do that to that. And so. you can see where it bowed up, uh, where it pulled on, under my right. body weight. Exactly. You don't want an AC guy ending up in your, <laughs> on your kitchen table, which I've heard many horror stories from Yeah, AC we're guys. about nine foot off the finished floor, so it would have been, yeah. uh, you know, one of those hard stops when we got to the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what else can we look at while we're up here? Um, you know, really and truly, that's about it. So um, we don't have to do all the sidewall insulation like on this wall. Right. It's one of our biggest issues that I have with um, homes that have the um, vaulted ceilings. Right. That this area is really hard to insulate in the sure. traditional attic. Sure. Um, you know, if you put the, the sidewall bat insulation up, what happens is it starts to fall and come off that wall. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, especially when it gets really, really hot during the day and things expand a little bit and then it cools off in the evening. Right. And then there's not a lot of space here between the roof and that vaulted ceiling to get insulation. Right. So uh, having this all, uh, you know, the insulation above it drastically um, makes this uh, cleaner, neater, um, has a much better look, but it also functions very, be you know, very well. Exactly. I also don't like to breathe in that that uh, spray and insulation that stuff breaks down and it start starts to kind of accumulate in the air oh yeah Nasty especially stuff. cellulose um cellulose is recycled newspapers so there's two main types there's the fiberglass right. which is itchy yeah. and then there's the cellulose which is really right. dust uh you know that um i'm not a big fan so i love this right normally i couldn't stand this long in an attic i'd be coming down after maybe 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah, it would be hard. But yeah, I mean, it's yeah. probably, uh, I don't have my temperature pretty on me, but yes, it's probably 80 degrees up here. I'm pretty comfortable, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And you get little cool features. Like I noticed that they put some uh, outlets here for you. So that's pretty nice to have up here. So if somebody's working, a technician's working on your unit or whatnot, they can have access to power. Right. right? So, so we're, we're heading, heading on the second floor porch. And uh, I don't love what's going on with the slope of this. If you can see that the, the porch deck is sloping towards the, the house. Oh, it is. It that, is. That bubble is literally going towards the house. Yeah, so uh, any rainwater that collects on this is going to run uh, against our house and sure. then run down our facial. Sure. Even though this is a covered porch, as you can see, and you've got a little bit of an overhang, so Hopefully that water just runs right off the roof, but you still don't want your porch. Yeah, any windblown rain is gonna oh, land yeah, on Oh yeah, yeah, that's right, we it's do gonna, get that. It's all gonna come towards the house, yeah. and it's gonna run down this bright white facial. Right. It's gonna stain it, it's gonna have mildew and mold growing on it. And um, Florida's known for that sideways rain. Yeah, well, <laughs> it happens every day. So how's that looking? That one's pretty level. But Not, you also want it to be slanted away, though. Yeah, tr yeah. And so, uh, yeah. And if this was my house, I would 100% want this sloping away from my house because sure. we want all moisture to discharge, discharge as far from our foundational walls as we can. 
Yeah. Because if you want to, settlement is mostly caused through moisture under our slab, under our footers, under our foundation. So the further we can get water away from our house, the safer and the longer our house is gonna last. All right, what else do you notice out here while we're so, looking? So they, they painted all this, this nice aqua, uh, you know, this lovely Florida green, but you will notice that they didn't, they didn't primer anything. So we've got all this bleed through, uh, especially on a brand new bright white, look at this bleed through we've got. Right. Um, and you know, I mean, this is supposed to be perfect. This is supposed to be brand new, ready to hand to our client. Those spots are everywhere. Yeah, uh, and that's what happens when you don't primer your wood and you just go up here and powder coat one layer of paint on it. Oh my goodness. It's one of the issues we have with homes are these windows, the, the springs that hold them up. Um, you know, they get a lot of that salt air and they rust very quickly and they break. And so when you lift the window, it'll just drop, uh, which can be a hazard for children or for you know, elderly people. And so we wanna make sure that those windows are um, functioning properly. So cosmetically, we got some paint issues, some drywall issues, some caulking issues. We've got the sticker still in the window. Oh, like the sticky stuff? Yeah, yeah. It feels like my 10 year old nephew's been playing with all the windows. <laughs> <laughs> We want to make sure that we don't have any um, hollow, loose spaces, some tile missing, any mortar behind it is going to come loose. We make sure that we have a good silicone seal along all of our glass. And lastly, so you don't want to make the rookie mistake of uh, running water too mature, you know, prematurely. You want to be able to get in the shower. Right. Make sure that we've got a slope on our sluter ledge. Make sure that on our seat that we don't have anything that's going to cause issues later. We've got, got a couple of tile here that I really don't like. It's very important too because this is on the second floor. So Ooh. any water issues that we would have here. Water intrusion would really destroy the house. Um, can do a number uh, in just a, one, one leak can one day can cause. Sure. Or even over time, sometimes you don't catch these things for a long time and then Correct. So this sounds to me like there's a, a, a full plastic pan underneath this shower and right. they tiled over that. But we've got some issues with some tile back here in the corner. Mostly I think that's cosmetic. So lastly, what we're going to do, make sure that we have good flow, shower's working. We're going to grab our uh, temperature gun here in a minute, make sure that we have good uh, Solid temperature, make sure it's funny that our hot works and our cold works. So mm -hmm. we've rented into uh, um, several houses lately that they uh, didn't run any cold water. The hot's hot and the cold's hot. So. And we've got that on-demand tank. Yep. And it's right here behind this. So, um, oh, so you're getting direct. Instant hot water. Instant hot water. We're just going to by hand make sure that we have some cold going too, which we do. Right. So it is a good cold shower day. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to make sure too that we've got good flow, that everything is, um, nothing's yeah. pulling and ponding is going to cause any right. mold issues later on down the like road. Like the water's not collecting in a corner or something, sloping directly to the drain. So you're supposed to have a quarter inch foot per foot drop towards a slope. and. We're relatively flat, but we do we do have some slopage, maybe an eighth of an inch. So water is running towards our drain. I don't see any ponding. Oh, look what I found. Can I can I be a home inspector for yeah. one quick what second? Do we have? So look at that. Look at that grout right there. Look at that. There's like a little bit of a crack in the grout. Yeah. See that? Look at the one on your left in the corner. Oh yeah, I see that too. So that's the one that we were pointing out earlier, how that's raised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There we go. Got to catch these things. Mm -hmm. So we have a nice curb. We've got a nice cap on here. Right. It looks really good in their door, more importantly. Um, right. You know, it's really, these doors have to be measured perfectly so that we don't have water. How's that gap looking? Let's look at, let's look at the gap. That, that's, that's impressive. That's a beautiful yes. gap. And look how even it is up here too. 
Correct. The top of the door. When uh, these things can't, once they've once they've been cut, once they've been tempered, you, right. you can't you can't change it. So any kind of sanding or any kind of cutting would shatter this glass. So you, your walls have to be square, pretty square. You, There's you, a little bit of wiggle room. A little bit. A little bit. So yep, that satisfies my OCD there. So we're missing our um, strike plate. Um, there you go on our door. And I know that piece. maybe to some of our viewers we're getting really, really picky, but what we want is for any of our clients to have the best move-in ready home. Right. That they don't need to de you know, you know, deal with the 11-month home warranty team. That right. you know, when they take possession, it's theirs. They don't have to have people in and out all the time fixing this, painting that, sending that. Right. We want it to be fully ready for them to move in and then it become their domicile, their home, and then they feel safe and secure and they don't have to worry about anything. Exactly. So uh, Josh is pretty picky. We got a big problem here too. What do we got? Well, we've got just one swift pull of this door from it going through the sheetrock because we have no door stop. Oh, gotcha. There we go. Can I, can I point out one thing? This is a sin here. You've got <laughs> a gold, got gold, and you got black. <laughs> yeah. And and that is not, yeah put that in the report put there you go look and we've got we've got it, some some stainless steel on our uh yeah flapper valve look at that we need everything gold look at that look at <laughs> that they went out of their way they got a gold faucet they got gold handles here yep gold Every, handle here gold trim yep you we got, have a gold light we got a gold light come on man <laughs> follow through it's yep got a little paint on our floor in these corners so this is one of the interesting things that I find too, is that our, uh, our doors, the, the guys who install the doors are not the guys that install the trim. Yeah. And the trim guys and the door guys, clearly in most homes, don't like each other. And so when they're <laughs> nailing the trim on, our nails go all the way through, and oftentimes they'll scrape and they'll tear. Oh. Uh, but it looks like we've done a really good job here. We you have know, one little scratch. We have a scratch here. I think that's from them probably packing it up those stairs. Sure. Uh, our trim isn't eating into, our, our trim nails aren't eating into our door, which is very, very common. I would say that it's actually more common than not that we have those big, long claw marks, scrapes where the, the door just gets pulled apart. We've got another one. Maybe we'll check it out. So here we have the one on the Bathroom master. Bathroom number two. So this is a, kind of like a dual master sort of upstairs setup. Here's a second bath with a pocket door. And gliding good. pretty good. It's sliding pretty good and we don't have any direct contact with any screws or nails. Nice. Moment that, yeah, we've right. got a huge gap here um, on our uh, toe kick. So we've got a nice stainless, nice steel tub here. And well, we're missing some paint right there. You see that? Oh yeah. They damaged it there on installation. My fingers are wet, but yeah. Sometimes it's hard to tell what's dirt and construction debris and what is missing paint, but we're gonna go with missing paint. Oh, you think it's scratched? Yeah, that's uh, damage from installation. So we're probably gonna either have to replace this tub. Look at all those chips. Oh my goodness. I've seen them uh, resurface these before. It's, it's, it's not ideal though. No, Once it's you not. resurface these, you kind of have to it starts a cycle of you having to do it about every five years. So we're just going around finding any kind of cosmetic defects. We've got um, got some areas here that just need a little bit of sanding touch up, especially here. Sure. So we tape everything so that our builder knows areas that we want them to address. Especially like we can't get that uh, attic access to close. Um, it requires sheetrock because it requires the one hour um, fire envelope, but it needs trimmed down and then it really probably needs a new piece of sheetrock cut for there. 
So we got a lot of cosmetic issues here. Oh yeah, that that looks terrible. Yeah, no, don't love that. It needs to be reworked. Yeah. We've got a lot of issues. I mean, I know that this is going to be behind the washer and dryer, but it's going to be covered up. Correct. But we're missing our trim piece. We've got a hammer mark here on our. Ooh, that's bad. Yeah, somebody's hit that with a hammer pretty good. Somebody's already touched up this door, but they. Wow, that's terrible. Yeah, we have some issue here. Yeah, you gotta like sand this down and repaint. We are not ready for our client to take possession. <laughs> no, no. Really bad. Look at that. Their caulking was. Yeah. And then our door too is um our door is impacting here. So we're missing the we're missing the door stops. Uh probably on this one, as you pointed out, we need to get the ones that are built into the hinge or the ones that are added to the top so that we can stop this. Before we're, you can see that they've already close the, door, close the door real quick. Check this out. That's terrible. You can already see that it's been slammed up against that. Correct. Before one teenager and one bad day and uh, all this will be broken. <laughs> right. <laughs> so we're definitely gonna put some tape there on our outlet. Okay, get this thing fired up here and we can see how our AC is working. We got the thermo camera, which I love. Absolutely. You can see we got a little bit of heat coming in at the highest point. When you see this, this is how wonderful that AC is blowing cold air. Right. It's just impacting the ceiling here. And we have um, these vaulted ceilings, you know, the uh, heat rises up there. But we are nice and cool up there. We are 74 degrees. There you go. I mean, 72, that is unbelievably low temperature for sheetrock. Um, it's probably 90 degrees outside. And then look at our window here. You see, it's a little bit warmer, um, but we're hitting, hitting about 85 at the highest. Um, I measured a window out on Holmes Beach on uh, Thursday, and it was 155, uninsulated window. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And that heat's coming into the dwelling. So these are reading about 76, which is very low. These are very good windows. Oh yeah, love the PGT windows. So we're gonna check and make sure that we don't have any missing uh, insulation on our exterior walls. It looks really good on this wall. See how it's uniform? We don't have like big lines of uh, bright yellow hot spots. I love that. So of course we're gonna have a tiny little gap and crack um, at our door. And we have a metal um, threshold, so that's putting a little bit of heat inside here. But I mean, look at it. It's within five or six degrees, maybe 10 of the rest of the house. You know, I love this thing because it's as close as we can get to x-ray vision. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> since we can't look at behind the walls, we can at least basically look through them. So we have look like a corner. Here. So that's what we were looking for. So, I mean, this is absolutely acceptable. You can see that it's just a tiny little spot that we have some heat radiating in that corner. Um, but on a typical new construction, I'm seeing this everywhere. I'm seeing, uh, you know, every, every panel, um, we can almost see every stud, every wall. And, uh, these are, these are exceptionally well insulated 10 out of 10 so far for the insulation. We can see that this, uh, attic access, it doesn't have to be insulated because right. Our whole attic is insulated. And we see how that's nice and cold because our, our AC register is over here, blowing really cold air. We're coming out at 57 degrees. And so this is the hottest spot so far, and that is exceptionally low temperatures. Just this camera makes it look very hot because it's very sensitive. Um, FLIR um, has been the world leader in thermal cameras um, for generations now. And they just make an unbelievable product. So that is um, all just exceptionally low temperatures everywhere we look. We don't have just the tiniest little gap. And what's happening there is that the, that is the outside wall, that's the corner. So there's not a lot of space to put insulation uh, up in this corner. You can see my finger there. <laughs> So that's our closet 
it looks, it looks great. Couldn't ask for better. Now, one of the reasons I'm a big fan, let me show you this. This is why Josh loves the thermal camera. <laughs> so see our wall here? Yeah. And then if what happens if we, we have a little water leak, let's just, just black a little water there. So we grab some water from our sink and we splash it on that wall. And here in just a second, as it starts to evaporate and cool off, Look at that water just start to appear. No way. Yep. That is amazing. So evaporation is a cooling process. So as that water starts to evaporate, it cools the wall and becomes incredibly visible. That kind of blows my mind actually. <laughs> yeah, it happens so fast. So that wow. was just me flicking my finger at the wall and throwing a little water on it. But if we have leaks or drips or if we have um, ceiling leaks, um, I have a lot of clients that are selling older homes and sometimes they'll try to paint over um, water damage. Water damage. Uh, they'll put some kills and they'll put some ceiling paint on there. And instead of fixing the, the leak, they hide the leak. And with uh, thermal and modern cameras now, it's really hard to hide any leak. Right. One thing I've been told about home inspectors is like, if, if they can see what I can see, why, why do I need them? But do you have all of this modern technology? You know, that's the thing. It's like, and do you know how to use this technology? Exactly. Because you, there's a lot to, it's a big learning curve. Yeah, and there's a lot of classes that we take to learn how to use these equipment. A couple of spots where the, see, we're not on a slab. So what's happening is some heat's coming in our dwelling. So you can see that the outside air is actually coming right through the wall here. So that's a big area of concern. We're gonna ask them to foam that up. Here's our front door. It's exceptionally cool. It's in almost direct sun. But now what's happening here? This is very interesting. See the left side of this has um, nothing radiating out, but it feels, if you look really closely right here, you see the heat is radiating. It's coming up from that gap. So we're missing, or we have a, a gap in our um, weather barrier, weather stripping at the top of this door. And then, so uh, a little bit of heat's just coming straight in through the top of this door right here. So this is not making a good seal. It's sealed here and it's not sealed through here. And so the outside air is coming in our house. And you can see that. Wow. But if we hold that shut for a while, uh, it'll start to cool off. Josh doesn't get a whole lot of opportunity or Tropical Sun um, to inspect new construction that is um, stick built. Yeah. So uh, really get to get an idea because there's going to be some crawl space underneath here. So that's our uh, refrigerator discharging um, some heat, which is typical function as it should. Right. Yeah, if you have a stick build, it's even more of a reason to get an inspection done because there's a lot of things like this. So what's going on back here, again, it's a metal threshold. So the metal is getting hot and letting, and then just got a tiny little gap in the corner on our um, weather stripping, letting a little heat in. And the same thing in this uh, top corner here we got see the gap and see all the, the heat coming in top of that window. And, and that's a, that's a out, um, that one swings out that door. So. Correct. So, I mean, impact rated. So not just the glass is impact rated, but the whole door. So the, sure. yeah, the ones that swing in, um, they're not as uh, uh, impact, but there's, it's much more difficult to, to, you know, stop a windblown tree branch or, you know, right. something coming, God forbid at your house. And then lastly, we're gonna make sure that our uh, panel doesn't have any kind of unusual hot spots. So we do have, um, we do have, you know, all, all these breakers are uh, ground fault. So they have uh, microchips in them. And so they are a little bit warmer uh, naturally. But um, I've seen, uh, you know, HVAC guys come in and undersize the wiring. And uh, I guess you'll get on our, on our page, www.tropicalsunhi.com. And you can see wiring that is just red hot inside your panel and hot wires make for dangerous homes everything here though is uh functioning as it should so we're going to start buttoning everything up and um i mean the biggest change has been that we have the gfi we have the ones that monitor the power um you can see that our dryer is still off we'll go upstairs and test that before we get out of here but uh, everything is as it should be, and uh, everything's buttoned up nice and tight. And uh, more importantly, um, you see, especially with the four points, you know, um, behind this is our main bus bar, and, you know, it's high voltage. 
200 amps, so it would kill you dead. Um, so we wanna make sure we don't have any extra holes knocked out uh, because just uh, a couple inches behind this, uh, you know, would be something that would, can or would cause instant death. Well, what's great is that that panel still has plenty of room for additional add-ons later, so. Exactly, and where this home is very energy efficient, um, you know, not a lot has changed in, in terms of wiring. I don't, you know, maybe if you ever added a pool or anything like that would be the only major um, demand, but you got 200 amps, you know, you got you know, full 200 amp panel, so you could add home um, EV chargers, or if you wanted to add solar, you got a lot of room to play around. All right, Josh, thank you so much for a full day's work yeah. here. I had a lot of fun um, following you around. I see you all the time. I've probably done somewhere south of 10 homes with you so far and we've got more on the schedule, but uh, here uh, we've explained so many problems we found with this brand new construction home. Now, what are the next steps? So, um, you know, this afternoon, what we're gonna do is put together a pretty lengthy report, about 40 or 50 pages, lots of photos, lots of explanations, uh, you know, pointing to, you know, exactly what our cosmetic, our structural issues are, uh, some of my biggest concerns. And then uh, lastly, I think we're gonna send this over to uh, the project manager, the buyer and the uh, builder. And we're gonna hold the builder's feet to the fire to try to get everything buttoned up and uh, all these issues corrected before right. our buyer takes possession and closes on this house. Right, so if you're asking me, is it worth it? Is the extra money worth hiring Josh Huffman? My answer is yes. I would say yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. You've saved my buyers time and time again because once you close, Here's one thing that a lot of agents won't tell you is that you can do things now while you're going through the process and you can ask for all these things. You don't want to have them do too much. You don't want too much of a punch list after closing because then it goes into the hands of the um, warranty, team. warranty team. And we've seen some crazy things happen where they'll come out and fix it, but it'll take them six to eight months to come out sometimes even a year out, whatever, right? Yeah. And then on top of that, they can't always, you're gonna be reliving in, in a construction zone. Exactly. Uh, we've seen a lady's windows being ripped out of her home. And flooring. And, and flooring. And her still living there. And her still living there. They would not give her a place to go and stay. They're not obligated to always, you know, it wasn't, you know, deemed a health issue or whatever, uh, but that's unacceptable to me um, to see that. Um, it's never happened to one of my people personally, but uh, we like to see the accountability happen before closing. So that's where this uh, powerful 40, 50 page report comes in. Yeah, we call this the final walkthrough the inspection. The final walkthrough inspection. We've got ammo, right? So yeah. we got hard facts. This is what was found. This is what code is. This is not code. So exactly. Thank you so much for your Thank time. Thank you. And looking forward to the next home inspection. Yeah, absolutely.